morning. Welcome to Wrightsville Beach United F. Methodist Church. I am so glad you are here today. As you can see, I'm not a preacher, but I'm a kid. My name is Batten Selby, and I'm nine years old, and I'm in the fourth grade at Eaton Elementary School. I love animals, I love to swim, and, and play my iPad. I want to be a veterinarian when I grow up. I'm also a comedian, so I have a few jokes for you. What do you how do you groups of angels greet each other? Halo, halo, halo. How do you make holy water? You take some regular wire and boil the devil out of it. If Mary had Jesus and Jesus was a little lamb, does that mean Mary had a little lamb? The good Lord didn't, didn't create anything without a purpose. Mosquitoes come close, though. Are you looking for the perfect Mother Day's gifts? The Circle of Hope is selling beautiful handmade necklaces this morning between worship services up, upstairs near the Fellowship Hall. All the money is raised will, will benefit Pastor Doug's of the fund and the United Methodist Women's Mission Supporting Women and Children. So don't you forget your mom's on your mother's day. This is your warning. There's still plenty of time to sign up for the Super Service Saturday, which will take place on April 30th. You can, you can find out more details and sign up for the Wednesday e-blast or by calling the church office at 910-256-4471. Our next Spirology and Mental Wellness Seminar with Dr. Jessica Whitney will be coming this Tuesday, April 26th from 7 to 8.15 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. The subject will be pandemic recovery. And the last announcement I have is that STARS is back. STARS and their seniors talking, remembering the seasons. We want to invite all seniors to join us for a May luncheon in the Fellowship Hall on Tuesday, May 3rd at 11.30 a.m. You can sign up on the bulletin board in the hallway. That is all. That is all so, so I have. So enjoy the service. And God stepped out on space, and he looked around and said, I'm lonely. I'll make me a world. And far as the eye of God could see, darkness covered everything, blacker than a hundred midnights down in a cypress swamp. Then God smiled, and the light broke, and the darkness rolled up on one side, and the light stood shining on the other, and God said, that's good. Then God reached out and took the light, took the light in his hands, and God rolled the light in his hands until he made the sun. And he set the sun a blazing in the heavens, and the light that was left from making the sun, God gathered it up in a shining ball and flung it against the darkness, spangling the night with the moon and the stars. Then down between the darkness and the light, he hurled the world. And God said, that's good. Then God, then God himself stepped down. And the sun, the sun was on his right hand. And the moon was on his left. The stars were clustered about his head. And the earth, and the earth was under his feet. And God walked, and where he trod, his footsteps hollowed the valleys out and bulged the mountains up. Then he stopped and looked and saw that the earth was hot and barren. So God stepped over the edge of the world, and he spat out the seven seas. He batted his eyes, and the lightning flashed. The lightning flashed. He clapped his hands, and the thunders rolled, and the waters, 
above the earth came down. The cooling waters came down. Then the green grass sprouted and the little red flowers blossomed. The pine tree pointed his fingers to the sky and the oak spread out his arms. The lakes cuddled down in the hollows of the ground and the rivers ran down deep to the sea. And God smiled again and the rainbow appeared and curled itself around his shoulders. Then God raised his arm and waved his hand over the sea and over the land. And he said, bring forth, bring forth. And quicker than God could drop his hand, fishes and fowls and beasts and birds swam the rivers and the seas, roamed the forests and the woods and split the air with their wings. And God said, that's good. Then God walked around, and God looked around on all that he had made. He looked at his sun, he looked at his moon, and all his little stars. He looked at his world with all its living things, and God said, I'm lonely. Then God sat down on the side of the hill where he could think. By a deep, wide river, he sat down with his head in his hands. God thought and thought till he thought, I'll make me a man. Up from the bed of a river, God scooped the clay, and by the bank of the river, he kneeled him down, and there the great God, Almighty, who lit the sun, stars to the most far corner of the night who rounded the earth in the middle of his hand that great god like a mammy bending over her baby kneeled down in the dust toiling over a lump of clay till he shaped it in his own image then into it he blew the breath of life and man became a living soul. Amen. Amen. Please join us in the call to worship. This is the day. This is the day. That the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Let us rejoice. And be glad in it. And be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let this us rejoice and be glad in it. This, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This, this is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made.
Hello, I'm Fletcher Britton. Please join me in saying the children's affirmation of faith found in your bulletin. We believe in God who loves us and wants us to love each other. This is our God. We believe in Jesus who cared about children and held them in his arms. We wanted a world where everyone could live together in peace. This is Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit who keeps work, working with us until everything is good and true. This is the Holy Spirit. We can be the church which reminds people of God because we love each other. This we believe. Amen. Hi, my name is VG Norville and I'm in the fifth grade at Wrightsville Beach Elementary School. Thank you for joining us for Children's Sabbath today. We hope you enjoy the service. Greet those around you with the peace of Christ. Psalm 51, have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out all my transgressions, wash away all my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For, all, for I know my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict, and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time your mother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness, even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with my hassop, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear... Joy and gladness, let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors your way so that sinners will turn back to you. Deliver me from my guilt of bloodshed, O God, you who are God, my Savior, and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. Open my lips, Lord, and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart you, God, will not despise. May it please you to prosper Zion, to build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in sacrifices of the righteous, in burnt offerings offered whole. Then bulls will be offered in your altar. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
bow your heads and join me in the morning prayer. Dear God, thank you for this beautiful Sabbath day and for our beautiful church family. Thank you for giving us comfortable homes, plenty of good food to eat, and water to drink. We pray that you help us to, get, to take good care of the earth which you have given us. We also pray for the leaders of our community and world that they will make decisions that honor and take care of your gifts to us. We pray for all the medical professionals who are taking care of the people affected by the virus. And we pray for our communities all over the world to stay healthy and safe. We pray for those on our prayer list and for those we lift up now in our hearts. These things we ask in the name of your Son, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as, earth, as it is in heaven, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. I am Rylan Collins, and I'm a third grader at Wrightsville Beach Elementary. There are many ways to give at Wrightsville United Methodist Church. Give online at wrightsvilleumc.org or scan the QR code found on the pew rack. Give on our app on your phone. Mail a check to Wrightsville UMC. There's also a box in the back where you can drop cash or check. Thank you for your generosity. This allows all our wonderful children's programming to take place. Enjoy the rest of the service. I'm Tess Perry and I'm VG Norville. We are both in fifth grade and we are excited to share the children's sermon with you today. The theme for our worship service today is God's creation. One of our favorite parts of God's creation is the ocean. Isn't it so cool that we all live so close to our beautiful ocean? Talk with your family at home if you love the ocean and all of God's creatures that live in the ocean. Today's, Today's story is Jonah, Jonah and, and the Whale. whale. This is a Bible that someone gave me when I was a baby, and we're going to share the story from you with this book now. God told Jonah to go to the faraway city and tell the people about him. At first, Jonah said no. Then he said yes. Jonah didn't want to go where God had told him to. God sent a fish to swallow him to show him what to do. The fish swam to the seashore and coughed Jonah onto the sand. Then Jonah prayed, thanked God, and said, I'll follow God's command. Now these are a few questions to discuss with your family. The first one is, why do you think God sent the whale? 
Second question, isn't it crazy that God sent a whale to swallow Jonah and then spit him out safely onto the dry land? Would you be scared in this moment or would you trust God? Thank you for joining us today. Let's bow our heads and pray together. Dear God, thank you for your beautiful creation. Thank you for always watching over us and keeping us safe. Thank you for caring for us and loving us even when we make mistakes. Amen. Then the same day at evening before being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you, as the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now Thomas called the twin, one of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said to him, We have seen the Lord. So he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days, his disciples were again inside and Thomas with them. Jesus came to the doors being shut and stood in the midst and said, Peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach your finger here and look at my hands and reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said him, to him, My Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that you, that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. Good morning. I'm Doug Lane, senior pastor here at Wrightsville United Methodist Church. And I really hope that you are feeling the presence of God in the midst of today's worship service that's being led by the children here at Wrightsville United Methodist. Our next speaker is not a child, but he knows a lot about children. He is the president of the Methodist Home for Children in Raleigh, and we are big supporters of the Methodist Home for Children. And we're really excited to bring Bruce Stanley, uh, the president of that organization, to bring today's message to you. He's been a United Methodist pastor for more than 35 years, is well respected and well known throughout um, our conference and throughout the state of North Carolina. I think you are going to love his message. He's always inspirational. And so it is my privilege um, to bring my good friend, Bruce Stanley, to our pulpit today. Our lectionary reading for this day from the 20th chapter of John's Gospel that you have just had shared with you in wonderful form is a story that is incredibly well known, not simply by the church, but really by the entire world 
and it's well known, I think, because of one of the central characters uh, in the drama. And unfortunately, I would say it is well known as the story of Doubting Thomas. It seems to me that uh, Doubting Thomas is not really a good way for us to remember this tremendous servant and disciple of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It seems to me that perhaps Desiring Thomas uh, would be a better way for him to be remembered because all that Thomas is desiring is the same thing that the other disciples had experienced. He wants to see Jesus again. He wants to be in the presence of his Lord and his Savior. He wants to remain in the loving relationship that they had. And we ought not to remember doubting Thomas as if doubt was a pejorative. The great theologian Paul Tillich, perhaps the preeminent thinker of the previous century, wrote that the opposite of faith uh, is not doubt that the opposite of faith is fear. And Paul Tillich said that doubt was a component of faith. And he went so far as to say that one could not claim to be a mature believer until they were comfortable with doubt. Because if you claim to have no doubt, you simply are a person who's accepting everything that you are told. So Jesus appears and there is Thomas who is desiring to be with him. And when Thomas expresses this desire, that unless I can see, unless I can touch, unless I can feel these wounds myself, then I cannot believe there is no rebuke from Jesus. Well, what Jesus really does with Thomas is that he invites him to come close and to draw near and to be with him in fullness and in completeness. And when I think about how many ways we contextualize the work we do at our Methodist Home for Children, it seems to me that this is what we are doing that we are all about this ministry of presence. We are wanting to be with Thomas and with Jesus there in that middle space, inviting people to draw near and to come closer so that they can have fullness of life through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When I was pastor of a congregation down on the coast, we were doing a prayer time. And when it came time for the voicing of joys and concerns, one of the old saints of the church who had been gone from worship for many weeks because of a long and lingering illness was back in worship for the first time. And they stood up and wanted to thank everyone in the congregation for all their well wishes and the support and said how thrilled they were to be back in church. And the congregation broke out in applause and everyone was so happy to see their friend. And then they decided it was time to pay me a compliment and looking at me and addressing the pulpit from the floor of the congregation, he said, and I want to particularly thank Reverend Stanley because he came to see me several times and I always felt so much better after he left. And the congregation, of course, erupted in laughter and it took a while to get the attitude of prayer back. And uh, I enjoyed a good natured uh, ribbing from a lot of people as a result of that statement. But what the man was saying is really true that we have to be present for one another. And it is important for us always to show up. And at Methodist Home for Children, that is what we do. We are involved in a ministry of presence and no one can claim to heal or cure or help everyone. But we try very, very hard for those whom are entrusted into our care to be present. And we value that perhaps more than anything else. One of the ways that we're present is through our in-home family preservation and family reunification services. And those services are done for a variety of reasons, but the greatest one is to keep family fracture from occurring. Because the lifetime outcomes for children who are raised with biological relatives are so much better than those who are raised uh, through the foster care system or through other parts of DSS and mental health. And so we're always trying to keep those family units intact. And we had here in this county a couple who both were substance affected. He was addicted to alcohol. She had become addicted to prescription drugs. Both of them had ended up with legal sanctions almost at exactly the same time. She had been forging prescriptions and had been caught doing that. He had had a DUI with his children in the back of the car, uh, which of course is reason for the children to be removed by Child Protective Services. And so to keep this family from falling apart and disintegrating, we were asked to send in one of our family preservation specialists. It happened to be someone who was a master's level licensed trained clinician. And we knew that the job one for this couple was to help them both achieve and then maintain some degree of sobriety. 
I had an opportunity uh, after this family had been in our care for a couple of years to interact and to be with them. And they, in fact, spoke and shared their story of success and triumph at one of our events. And when the wife stood and spoke, she addressed our family preservation worker and narrated the story. And she said, if you had asked me at the beginning of our relationship, would this ever be somebody that I would consider to be a friend? She said, the answer would be no way. I did not like her at all. And she said, one of the things that frustrated me so badly was that I would try to avoid my obligations and responsibility with my treatment protocol. And she held me accountable. She said she was well aware that my NA meetings were at seven o'clock each evening. And I would look out my kitchen window and there parked out by the street at 640 every evening would be this staff person from Methodist Home for Children. And they were waiting for me to emerge and then going to follow me to make sure that I was going to the NA meeting and complying. And she said I would moan and groan and curse and grumble. And she said, but now this person whom I did not even like, I have grown to love. And I recognize that I probably could not have achieved sobriety and maintained a loving relationship with my family and kept my children in my home if it had not been for this person who was willing to be present morning, noon, and night in order to see that I could become well. When that woman was done speaking and a crowd of folks were going up to greet her and thank her for her courage and um, praise her and make sure that she was... Um, continuing to feel good about who she was. I had someone who tugged on my elbow and turning around, I saw an older couple who I knew were not familiar to me and they disclosed that they were the mother and father of this woman. The father said, I just wanted to come and to greet you and to thank you. And he said, you may think that you have been in ministry with my daughter or with my grandchildren. He said, but truth of the matter is you have been in ministry with us as well, even though you haven't met us and haven't seen us because you brought our daughter back to us. She was lost in her addiction and we were so afraid and we did not believe that we would ever be able to have a normal relationship with her again. And he said, I want to thank you for your presence in her life. And we do try to be present and we do try to appear. And if we think that it was a miraculous thing on that Easter morning, all those years ago when Jesus appears and suddenly shows up and is present there with Thomas, that is a miracle that occurs again and again and again. And the people of God are called to show up and to appear and to invite those who are in need or those, frankly, who are somewhat in doubt to come closer so that they may be made well. And we don't simply do this with family preservation or family reunification, but across all of our service areas, whether it would be foster care, whether it would be uh, through the adoption world, whether it would be one of our 14 residential facilities, and whether it would be in our college scholarship program, we are always trying to be present. The importance of that was made clear to me yet again uh, through a beautiful and wonderful note that I received just a couple of weeks ago. Late in the fall, I received a phone call from someone um, whom I had known across the years, and she shared with me that her oldest daughter uh, had a child three years of age who was being bounced out of her early childhood program. The child had uh, an emerging uh, developmental disability, certainly a spectrum disorder, and who knows what will happen over time. Uh, but the early childhood program that she was in was not really equipped to deal with somebody with those severe disabilities. They had first demanded that the family uh, hire someone full time to be an individual teacher within that context and in that setting. And then they had refused to let outside therapists who would do occupational therapy and speech therapy with the child come into the program saying it was too disruptive. The parents were disconsolate. They knew that they were not equipped themselves to try to teach and to train and to educate this young child whom they loved. Uh, but who seemed so distant and remote from them and whose behaviors were so bewildering. And they had begun to think that there was going to be nowhere for them. And this grandparent said, I don't know why I didn't think of Methodist Home for Children from the very beginning, but I understand that you have early childhood programs. And I have been told that you are willing to take children who have been removed from other centers because of their behaviors. And sure enough, starting in January, space was made available and room provided for this particular child. 
Um, was she a challenge and did she present some difficulties initially? Yes, upon being dropped into a different environment and making new friends and having new teachers, those are all routine adjustments that uh, any child in an early childhood program would go through. For this child, they were particularly difficult. But the handwritten note that I received uh, just a few weeks ago was from the mom and it did not have tear stains on the pages, but I'm sure she was teary as she wrote it. And what she said is, I cannot believe the difference you have made in the life of not only our child, but in our home. And she said, my husband and I were people who had no hope. We could not see a future for our child or for our family. And you have restored to us, not only our child, but you have actually restored hope for the future. And we now have reason to believe that she can have a productive life and that things we will be well. And she said, thank you for letting her be in your midst. And this too is a ministry of presence. And even if the person who is present presents some difficulties and some demands and has some challenges and some things that are perhaps can make us stretch and bend in ways that might not always be easy and sometimes might frankly be awkward and demanding, we still want to be present. We want to be as Jesus was when Thomas was in front of him saying, come near, come near, close that gap, let there be no distance between us and let us be with you so that we might be able to continue to serve you. Years ago, Thomas was expressing his grief. He was sharing the fact that he wanted to have what others seemed to have, which was an encounter and an experience of the risen Lord. He wanted to be able to embrace God and to know that things would be well. And so it was that Christ came and with that holy presence was able to be reunited and Thomas was able to have his hope and his certainty for the future restored to him. It is a beautiful and wonderful thing uh, for us to be able to do mission and ministry together at our Methodist Home for Children. And we do hope and pray that at the end of our days that God will recognize that we did everything we could to be present with those of his children who had the greatest needs. And for the privilege of being part of this mission of this ministry, I stand here this day and say thank you and amen. Well, as you have seen today, the children of the church are not just the future of the church, they are the present of the church. They are leading us, not just in worship, but in so many other ways. I just love the faith that each one of these kids is bringing to the church and is inspiring us with. And so as we go throughout our coming week, 
I invite you to think about ways that you might invest in the greatest part of God's creation, his people, and especially his children. So as all of us are children of God, let us go in peace. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.